afternoon, Truth Wins team. We're back again with another good topic. Ah, oh, be armed and ready. Be armed and ready. Right. Well, what we, we're... The body of Christ needs to be armed and ready. Right. So, first we'll start off. One of the ways to arm ourselves is in prayer. And so we're going to pray and then we'll go to our lesson. We glorify you, Father. We thank you, Father, that you guide us and direct us in this production today. We thank you, Father, that you're... Your will, your knowledge, your understanding, your revelation is brought in a vivid uh, understanding to the body of Christ so that they are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, their Lord. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, the Lord, because we know the word of God and we have the voice of the Holy Spirit guiding our paths. We ask this now in the name of Jesus, the name above all names. Amen. Amen. Well, more and more today, I hear people saying, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I, I don't know what God's called me to do. I, I'm not really sure what my position is. I think people... Are we going to tell you how your position is today? Right, so I was going to... So be a, be a listener. So I, I, I thought, what, what verse could I have? Well, of course, we always like the fact that Jesus' doctrine is the sower sows the word. So our words are very important because that is what will get us where we're going. But as far as our commission, what has God commissioned you to do? What right. is it his, you're supposed to His mandate. To, what are you supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be doing? Don't what, let religion... No, let the Bible tell us what yeah, we're... Yeah, let the Bible tell you. Read the Bible. Study right. the Bible. Right. But in this case, this is Jesus telling us... Us, all of us, you, me, my family, my friends, everyone around the world, what he wants us to be doing, what, how he wants us to be ready to do it and how we get there. So we're going to go, this would be the scripture. I know lots of pastors over the past have chosen scriptures they want to use, but if I was going to choose one this scripture, this is the mandate of Jesus. This is the scripture that every believer this is to, how you get armed. This, but not how you get armed. This is you're doing what Jesus told you to do, and that's the most important thing. Not what I tell you to do. Not what He tells you to not do. Not what the priest tells you what to do. Right. So, and if you, if Jesus told you, then the Father and the Holy and Spirit. Jesus is the Word of God. And but the Holy Spirit and the God would agree with what Jesus told you to do. So this is what. You don't have to wonder, what should I be doing? This is what you should be doing. Every single person yes, that's viewing this. Every person every on believer. earth needs to know this scripture. Right, and, and do it. Every believer. So here we go. It says in Mark 16, 15 through 19, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these shines shall follow them that believe. And in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. Right, that's a very powerful instruction for the believer. First, you have to be a believer, right? And we, once you're a believer, then... You need to go out and you share have a it. mandate, and we just read that. I just read that to you, and you need to make that your your uh, call to arms. You might say right, and so I know there's different religions that teach different things, all kinds of things, but we're going to go with what Jesus taught. And Jesus, yeah. if Jesus said it, I believe it. That settles it, right? And, and he's is Jesus doing this for us then? No, Jesus said, you need to do this. Right. He said, you need to speak in he, tongues. We'll, we'll read scripture later on to tell you where Jesus' position in all this is. Right. So Jesus said, you need to speak in tongues. You need to lay hands on the sick. And they will recover. recover. It didn't say it didn't maybe. Say they may. Right. It, it doesn't say, I don't know if 
it should happen what God thinks about it. Right here, we're hearing what God thinks about it. You lay hands on the sick. You pray for it's them. It's God's responsibility. After you've done it, you've right. done what the Word of God said. It's God doing it. Right. So if you need to speak in tongues and you don't, you go, Father, Just, I Father, ask. Father, I want to speak in tongues. tongues and, Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name and start talking and yeah, the not, Holy Spirit gives it to you. There's no barrier there. God's already given it to you if you ask for it. Right. Ask and you shall receive. Right. So if you've done anything that would harm you, would be poison, we're covered by the blood of Jesus that it won't harm us if we've... Right. We lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I mean, I was just reading, for example, that they gave wrong doses of COVID-19 vaccines to some children. They double dosed them. And, wow. and then we go, but that's not a problem. Yeah, you, we just use the word of God, God to and no poison counteract can, those evil people, actions. Right, that happen. So there, there's always an action. If you would get a wrong vaccine, if you'd get bit by a snake, if you'd eat or, bad or food. You, that somebody be, gave you poison. I've heard of that in the past. People were trying to kill people. They gave them poison, but they didn't die because right. they knew the word of God. Right, so I think if you just... Stand on the scripture, it'll work. But we're going to tell you, we always believe it's great this scripture's here, but we're going to give you some backup scriptures that that teach you that this is the scripture. So we'll go on to our next thing. And this is, if you don't know Jesus is the Lord, this is about Jesus. It says, and uh, Jesus proved his sonship by offering healing to all men. Matthew four twenty three through 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and, the, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went out throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them. And in Acts 10 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And in 1 John 3, 8, he that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sin, sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Right, so here it's put to rest what Jesus came to do. He came to heal everybody, every disease. If you have mental illness, whatever, he heals it all. He, you cast out the devil, which is the demand or command, not demand. It is a demand and a command that Jesus gave, like cast out demons. So you need to be doing that. I, and, and, I, we, and we are created a triune being, a spirit, soul, and body, and he's came to redeem us from the curse of the law in all three forms of our life. Right, and that, I would say, is one of the big problems with all the homelessness is mental illness and drug addiction, which is a poison. So we have the power to take care of that. Really, well, the, it, we need to teach. It's, it's the very beginning of... Uh, um, uh, Mark 16, 15 through 8 says that we need to teach all me. We need to teach those people on the streets. The good news. that The good news. Jesus and they will cast out the demon out of their life. They will right. be redeemed from the curse of the law. Right. And so that, I, I think I, they're wanting to pour more and more money into psychiatrists and things like that. But that doesn't really resolve that's the problem. That's not a spiritual. That's just a cover up. But it doesn't really heal you like medicines are really designed to help you have your body be able to heal you and some just mere like kind of kind of mask, mask the the illness and w we want it gone so that's why he said lay hands on the sick and they shall recover right so right there we we learned that jesus showed us his sonship 
by showing us that it's his thing to go out and heal all. Not, and we're his body on right, earth. Right, because as we know from Mark, it's his his uh, command to us is to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He didn't say part of them. He said, go lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So we're showing right there, he healed them all and he's now given the power to us. So that's our job. So we'll go on to some more scripture that'll help cement this idea that this is what God wants you to do. If you didn't know what you should be doing, it doesn't mean you couldn't do under other things like be a preacher. You could be a salesman. You could be an artist. You could be a yeah, nurse. But you need to walk, walk in the kingdom of God, which is the while word of God. While you're doing your job, you, when you're doing in, your job, and while you're in the grocery store waiting in line, you can talk to people. You can pray for people wherever you are. So you, it doesn't mean you can't still live and do what you need to. You have and you got to put down the devil. But you need to be doing what he's commanded you to do because Jesus isn't going to come now and lay hands on the sick. So if your child is sick, Jesus isn't going to come and do that for you. You need to do it. If your mother's right. sick, you need you to do it. You have the power. God's given us, as people that are relatives to us, we have the power to help them much better than somebody on the street you don't even know. But, but the power works well because I've prayed for people and, in Madagascar. In Madagascar, but I prayed for people. I prayed that people in my church would just be healed sitting in the service, listening to the word, and they've been healed. They've been able to have babies. God will reach you wherever you are. Right. But let's see what else. He kind of, we have the thing he had originally the 12 apostles, which he did stuff for. So let's see what he yeah. did with them. And it says in uh, Acts 1, 4 through 8, the Holy Spirit promised... And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and in all and the end of the earth. And in Luke 24, 49, it says, Behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endowed with power from on high. All right, so we see originally he was giving it to, really it was more than just the 12 apostles because we know there was 120 in the upper room. Um, right, and we including have, Mary, the mother of Jesus, right, so and so, all his relatives, I'm sure, James and all the rest of them. Right, and so they all spoke in tongues. They were all uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. They all went out and preached, so to spread it yeah, around it the world. Yeah, it says it, it was just a um, like a... a a blanket of God's blessing upon the whole area. Right. And so they went out, they laid hands on the sick, they cast out devils. As we know, Paul was bitten by a snake and it didn't hurt him at all. So he did, he was, then, that then was the, no they, poison. The people thought he was some kind of God. Well, yeah, yeah we are in a sense, we, we are God's the power. children of God. Right. So we have his power to, to do all that. So I, I think it's really important that we see what the disciples did because basically what it is is the disciples were really kind of the first group that were really born again because that's right when Jesus died because before that we were in a dis different dispensation. So right. they're the Didn't beginning. The, the, the old covenant had less power in it. Right. So that's the beginning of the new covenant because he's risen from the dead. So let's see. He's told that group to do it, but how does that affect you and I today? It says, all the disciples throughout the ages are commanded to observe the same commands that Jesus gave the first disciples. And in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, he told his disciples, 
I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples in all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the Son and in the Holy Spirit. Then teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure that that this, that I am with you always, even into the end of the world. And in Acts 2, 4, D3, a deep sense of awe was on all them all, and the apostles did many miracles. And in Hebrews 2, 3, and 4, what makes us think that we can escape if we are indifferent to these great salvation announced by this Lord Jesus himself and passed on to us by those who who heard him speak. God always has shown us that these messages are true by signs and wonders and various miracles and by giving certain special abilities from the Holy Spirit to those who believe. Yes, God has assigned us such gifts to each of us. All right, so there it's telling us, like emphatically, right? We, have we been are assigned. we have a mandate from G- Jesus said that he was has all power on heaven and earth, and then he delegates that power on earth to the body, his body on in on on earth. We he's not going to do it for us. I've said this before. He is not going to do it. See, the problems is. We need to do it. We need to realize that we need to do it. Well, he can't do it because he gave you the power to do it. He well, he's not going to do it. We yeah. have to do it. Right. And we I, have to do it. And it's not going to get done until we do it. Right. And I think people want to, because they don't want to be responsible if they don't pray right because they haven't bothered to study. So they well, want Well, then the, you need to want, learn the Holy speaking no, in Holy Spirit. No, but spoke. what they want is to have the pastor do it. Like, go get the pastor to lay. Oh, you but let the, the pastor do it. Yeah. But the pastor can't. I did that once and I, I the pastor goes, I, you know you have the power to, to pray the prayer. And I go, okay. And then I did it and it came to fruition. <laughs> Right, so it's not the pastors, it's not wrong to, it says go to the elders and have prayer, but you can do it yourself. But if pastors were required to pray for the whole world, one man or even all the number of pastors there are, they couldn't cover everybody. So as the body of Christ and Jesus' disciples, that's our calling. Our responsibility. So if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, which a lot of people seem to say, I don't know what I should be doing. Should I be a pastor? Should I be a this? Well, maybe you shouldn't, but you should start do this. out by knowing your the scripture of Mark 16, 15 through 18. Right, so, so that you do what it says. Jesus didn't say, oh, a few people are going to do this. The body of Christ is, are, is mandated to do it. Right. And, and, and the gifts of tongues, it's a gift. He, what is a gift? A and gift is like it, a Christmas it, uh, gift. I said it's, true. it's a supercharge. You get the Holy Spirit when you get born again. But you get the supercharge of the Holy Spirit when you get filled with the Holy Spirit. It overflows you and it becomes, it makes you endued with power. But it's a gift. It's a gift. It's like at Christmas. Do you turn away one of your gifts? And do you want to, yeah, you want to go, no, 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 don't give me that. I don't want that because somebody might you know, have a, a fit over it. Right. Well, who cares about them? Right. You, it's between you and God. Right, because if so, somebody gave you... Well, especially if you're young, I don't know actually even what all young people wear, but if they gave you something that was kind of outlandish and you're young, you'd wear it. So wear the badge of speaking in tongues. Don't be afraid to do it. Wear And let the Holy Spirit direct your path on that. He'll tell you what to do. If you're intimate with the Holy Spirit, he'll tell you when to do it and when not to do it. Right, and I I see like... I mean, with your own personal, you can do it anytime you want to do it. But I'm just saying... Before people. But I, I did see people, I guess Taylor Swift is very popular, and now people are wearing all these bracelets up and down their arm. They're being Swifties. How about we be Swift Jesus-y's. and Jesus? I don't know. Holy, yeah. Holy Spirit Holy Spirities. Yeah. Rock Holy, Hogadesh. Well, I like that. Holy Spirities. Yeah. Holy Spirities. Yeah, like, let's let's walk around with our badge. I don't know. Maybe someone, one of our 
our listeners will come up with a good idea what we can do that shows everybody yes if you come to me i'll lay hands on you and you'll be healed like we take our position that god's given us every right. single believer and, and i tell you once you get there you're going why did i wait so long and, and the whole thing is i think also a lot of things is people go well, you know, what if I lay hands on him and they're not healed? It's not, it's your, not job. your responsibility. God heals them. You lay hands on it. God does like, it. You know, it's you it's know God's job. you know God's going to take care of it. Right, because he said, regardless, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Right. So you lay hands on you it. You take the responsibility of doing the word of God, and God will right. take the responsibility of doing His half of the. But of so the when, when you're laying hands on the sick. You don't need to tell God everything that's wrong with the sick because God already knows. He that. already knows it all. What we're going to do is like Abraham did. He called those things that be not as though they were. That's our father of faith. So you lay hands on the sick and we say, we go to the father. We say, thank you, father, that whoever's healed by the 39 stripes of Jesus. Let's say it's John. We go, John's body be well in Jesus name. And we've laid hands on him. And then in the it's, name of Jesus, the name above all names. Right, then God does it. Uh, God does it. God does it. It's not you doing it. You have the responsibility you have is to say it and, and say it. You don't have to say it in any great, you know, like, like oratory or anything. You just could say it, say it in the name of Jesus. You're uh, body be Jesus well. healed. Yeah. Body That's be, it. Because if you go to look in the Bible, like how jo Jesus healed. He, he was very quick. Just be well. Be just well. Be, just believe. Get up. <laughs> just believe. Get up. Just believe. Right. And they didn't, Jesus didn't say, oh, uh, some long oratory. Right. Neither did uh, Paul or any well, of them. Well, a lot of times he just said, as you believe. So the people had already prepared themselves. Right. Yeah. They were, he, he the Holy Spirit was guiding Jesus. Because well, so Jesus said, it's my spirit speaking. So we're going to go over, although I know we kind of did this to begin with but we're gonna for those of you who didn't know what your command was how to arm and be ready what you're supposed to be doing we're gonna tell you one more time yeah this is it everybody get ready in matthew mark 16 15 through 19 and he said to them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, these signs, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, or, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. For then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received to heaven and sat at the right hand of God. See, God, when he said it all, his responsibility was delegated to you. He was taken into heaven, and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, as our advocate before the Father, and when we ask, as I've said in past uh, programs, that he's sitting there, and God's only, he's only presenting those that are yes and amen. And we speak, when we, we according to the word of God, we, we pray according to the word of God, we receive it, yes and amen. It's very simple. Actually, that's why he said, like, be like a child. A child's prayer would be very short and concise. Father, I come to you for daddy. Daddy, be well. In Jesus' name. Done. Because <laughs> the, the faith <laughs> of a child. Right. Done. Right. So now that you know what your mandate is, there's no excuse for there's not no doing There's no barrier it. here. We, we, the devil tries to bring all kinds of barriers but we don't and, really care about that because that has nothing to do with anything because we always listen to God. So. But we got to discern those and put them down, put the devil down. We always do. We always put him down. We're, right. we're more than conquerors. So we're just going to do what it says. And then you're going to go, if you aren't sure how to do it, go look how Jesus cast out devils. Go look at how Jesus healed the sick. 
Go look at how the apostles... Paul did it. Like how Paul got people born again. What did they do? Go study them. Yeah, read the the right. the, the letters from all the right, disciples. Even, maybe if you like it, look at a Billy Graham crusade on how he called people forward to be born again. Because that's where you start. And then as you, after you do that, then you do all the rest. You cast out devils. You go, you go you listen to uh, Robin D. Bullock. Or you go and 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 get filled with the Holy Spirit. He makes it really simple. Just watch watch it at the end of his eleventh uh, hour or at the end of the uh, right the right. Uh, international church on on Sunday. And I think and it's Mac, very simple. He Womack just has a he he ask the Father and he re- and you receive it. Womack teaches on healing, right? And, and speaking and, in tongues and and, and and Copeland and Hagen and there's all kinds of people all over the place. That, that do it just make even sure. even uh um uh, creflo dollar <laughs> right what you need to do is you need to make sure that you listen to someone who doesn't put in a but in the statement like yeah you lay hands on the sick but then he's not everything gonna, before but, it's but gone Aunt susie's got all these problems so she can't so, but well. but 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 so that if they if they're changing what it said because we and now you, know you can read mark 16 15 through 19 Right, and then you know what it says, so don't don't make it be what it doesn't say. Don't let yeah, any don't let the else... butts take over the the word of God. Right, don't let anyone else through their experience that they did have somebody yeah. like I, I had someone say, "Well, haven't you ever prayed for somebody and they died?" Well, yes, I'm not going to lie, I haven't, but it's not God, and it wasn't me. But I don't know what effect Satan had or what the people themselves were saying. Because the devil's come to, to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. And Jesus said he came to give you life and more abundantly. Right. So who, who's, who's the report do you believe? You believe Jesus or the devil? Right, because we, we did do a lesson probably right when we started because I, I sat and listened to people who had said things about how they would die, when they would die, they couldn't be healed. Like if if you're saying I can't be healed, I can't be healed, you can't be then healed. You can't be healed. I can't. I can't supersede you. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, your words are or your or your avenue to success or or demise. Right. She'll be the the weird part is if you start looking for why things happen and you hear what people have said, you'll you'll know what caused it. But really. I think I'm getting off the topic, but that that's to explain maybe why it doesn't happen, but it's not God because God said yes and amen. Problem. And it's we not you that. if you're doing it right. So the people need to take their responsibility just as you have to take your responsibility. All of us need to know that yes, God gives life abundantly and Satan is the Satan's out to steal and kill. The Satan, yes. The Satan. He's he's dead in the water when so, you know Mark 16, 15 through 18 right. as your mandate from Jesus himself. Right. Jesus is not going to do it for you. You have to do it. Right. You have the responsibility. Right. And when you take the responsibility... It'll be yes and amen. <laughs> yes and amen. Yes. And it's done. And I'm looking God at... is all powerful and you are his cohort. Right. You and are I... his child. And I'm looking forward to um, having people email us or saying post- I post- laid hands on the sick, sick and they, they recovered. Or I laid hands and I cast out this demon. Or, yeah, this demon. This. Or I went out and preached the gospel. I discerned and... that it was a demon and I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Or I Done. Or I talked to my friend at work and told him about Jesus and now they're a member of the body of Christ. So there's a... Right. Or I talked to someone about speaking in tongues or you did it yourself. So right. whatever happened... In fact, a, I... You know, I've said it before. Uh, I heard about it and I wanted it. Galen got it. And I'm going, well, if she got it, I got it. So I, I went to a, uh, a gas station in, in Manhattan Beach. It was on the way home from work and all that. And I went... And I and I I did confessions, um, Charles Cap confessions on that, and eventually I just kind of opened my mouth and it started happening and it, it developed in, in a short time and I said, well yeah, I got filled in the filling station by the Holy Spirit, the Rock Hagadesh came upon me and 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 overflowing, right. and I loved it. Right, because <laughs> you don't have to be in a church to do it. You can do it at home. You can do it in the shower. You can. 
Do yeah, it. I know somebody did it in the shower. He said he's he, listening to Robin D. Bullock in the no, shower. But it? No, I thought he did Womack. No, I think Her, it was... His wife did Bullock, I think. Okay, but, well, anyway. But, but I, it doesn't matter. God's wherever you are, so... And a lot of times you might want to do it in, like, in your closet, wherever. Or in your car. Or in your car where you to start off with, and then... Yeah, and you got to develop it. Right. It's, you know, or, you, or we were people at... People get a, squeamish sometimes, but don't get... Just, just let it go. Right. We've been at um, conferences and asked people, do you want it? And just prayed with them right there. And right. And they, they got it. it. Yeah. So that's that happens, too. So there's so many ways. Just ask God and he he's the giver. So right. we hope you have a good week growing in all these areas. Um, yeah. And, we'll, and, 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 and meditate on Mark we'll 16 be back. and 50. True, truth wins. Truth wins. Yes. Truth wins. That's our... It's the... It's the Truth three wins. and one. or it's Looks like a, a W. Well, we really almost need a top for our T, but you can't do that with one well, figure. Well, truth is, is God. It, well, uh, truth is number one. Right. It solves everything. If you've got right. the truth... The truth sets you free. It's number right. one. If, so now... If you've you got the truth, the truth sets you free. So now you have the truth on what your calling is. You don't have to wonder, like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what God wants me to do. Well, then you just get a relationship with God. Right. And he wants you to have the desires of your heart. So if you like art, become an artist, unless he tells yeah. you no. He's and, there. You just got to cultivate. And while you're doing your art and you're out selling it, maybe at a flea market or wherever you take and your... a lot of times I speak in tongues under my breath and it, things just happen the way God wants no, it to. No, but when you're out in the world, that's where you preach the gospel. So if right. you're out at a Sunday fair... Well, you don't have to go, I uh, you know... I remember the movie. No, we're not going any farther. Thank you. That was <laughs> but anyway, good. No, we're, John three sixteen. You know. No, that. we're not gonna. We're not going there. That's a different lesson. Next week or in a month or two or three. So we're we're gonna say goodbye. Uh, this is the month to be thankful because we're in November. So remember to thank God. Do a mitzvah. Have a party. Thank God for the sun, for the rain, for your family, for your job, for your dog. See, as you know, I like dogs, cats. <laughs> Obviously, I like dogs and cats. And we'll see you next week.